Rabbi Simon Jacobson is a scholar, author, and speaker. He is the publisher of the Algemeiner Journal, originally a Yiddish weekly founded by his father in the early 1970s. Natanya Alimur was a, a writer who um, uh, was first in the Lechi gang and was a very, a very zealous and passionate uh, Zionist and fighting the British occupation for, the, for an establishment of a state of Israel. Once the state was established, he became very disappointed in what he saw and really uh, began to be actually an anti-Zionist writer and much more pro-Arab. And his articles in the Hebrew in Israel would be very inflammatory, would incite a lot of people, very, very offensive to many. My father you know, followed him and knew who he was Years later, when the Algemeiner was established, at some point in the mid-70s, I think, 73 or 74, he um, asked him to come on board to write, because he wrote in Yiddish, to write for the Algemeiner. Now, he asked my father, he says, you know that my writing is not exactly the same uh, line of thought that you have. He says, yeah, it's a newspaper. We won't censor you. It's good for the paper to have your voice. And he began writing, and many of his articles were inflammatory. My father would get very strongly criticized, why are you publishing him? Now, not all articles were uh, that way, but many were. And, uh, and they was, he was a very good writer. So he made a very good case and exposed many different angles of Israel's duplicity and hypocrisy and so on. And that was it, the newspaper. Um, in Tov Shalom at Zion, Rosh Hashanah, he was in New York, Natanya Alamur, so my father invited him to our, to our home for a meal and said, you know, afterwards, the second day of Shoshana is a Fabrengen. We'll go over to the Fabrengen and you'll meet the Rebbe. <laughs> now, this was not his environment, but he respected the Rebbe, so he agreed. <laughs> After the Fabrengen was Kesho uh, Brach. So my father called him over, put him in front of the line. They went over to the Rebbe. My father introduced him, Tanya Alamur. The Rebbe smiled and said, does this too? Meaning, you know, like he recognizes him. And the Rebbe says to him that you're not afraid of people that I know, because he would write these articles that were very inflammatory and didn't care what others thought. He wasn't ready for such a question. So he decided to just say one word. He says, Rebbe, mitracht. And the Rebbe said, what's the asach to tracht? Remember, he told us afterwards, he didn't want to tell the Rebbe, no, I don't really believe, or I'm not sure what I believe. So he hinted to the Rebbe the story of Rabbi Yitzhak Badichuva. Rabbi Yitzhak Badichuva once saw a guy smoking on Shabbos and said to him, you probably don't know Shabbos today. So he said, I do know Shabbos. He says, so you probably don't know smoking is prohibited on Shabbos. He says, I know, Rebbe, I know Shabbos. I know you're not allowed to smoke. I don't believe. And uh, I'm smoking on Shabbos intentionally. So Rabbi Yitzhak Badichuva, who is the Avi Yisrael, the lover of Jews, turns to God and turns to heaven and says, look, ze, vitaya eid, ze vilnizon ken ligin. How precious is a Jew, he doesn't want to tell a lie. So he didn't tell the story, but he just said, with the In other words, with his answer, mitracht, he was at least being truthful. He wasn't lying. The Rebbe, without missing a beat, says to him, The Unterscheid is that Levi Yitzhak Badichever had geret wegen not zweit nieden, und du das wegen sich. And he was very taken by the Rebbe's uh, sharp response, which was right to the point. Then the Rebbe said to him that since you write, uh, you should continue writing. So he says to the Rebbe, you read what I write? The Rebbe says, yes, I read everything you write. And I also read what you wrote, what you wrote in the Rosh Hashanah column. Since you write, you were blessed with writing, you should continue writing. And because you have a column, you cannot leave your space empty. So since laws in that you can't leave your column empty. You have to continue filling and writing it. But that concluded the Kesha Bracha. They came home, my father and Natanya Lemur, and they told the story. We were all very uh, taken by the story. It was a powerful story. It was already 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning.